Hey, welcome back and thanks for stopping by my channel. So this time we're gonna talk about the TCP stream graph window scaling. Maybe you've seen that before as you've set a TCP stream graph before, or maybe you're looking at throughput or the Stevens graph, but what is that window scaling graph? How does it work? How can we use it to troubleshoot? Coming up. So in this channel, we talk about Wireshark and how to troubleshoot networks and slow applications and also how TCP works. So if you like this video, consider subscribing and give a thumbs up down below. So window scaling, maybe we've seen that before as we've done some troubleshooting with TCP. Let's get into it and see how that graph works. Okay, so here we are in our trace file and if we open it up, we can see that it's just a simple connection between a client and server and data is going from 192.168 over to 10.001. That's the direction that these large packets are being sent in. Now, before we jump into the window scaling graph, first, let's go ahead and add a couple of fields or rather columns to help us get a better handle of what's going on in this trace. So as you can see in my column headers, I have bytes in flight. Now you can add that as a custom column. If you come down, just pick any of those packets that you see, you just pick one that has some data in it. If we come down to sequence acknowledgement analysis and then come down to bytes in flight, we can just right click that or two finger tap it if we're on a MacBook and we can come up to apply as column and then that will give us bytes in flight. Now another one that I would like to add as well, let's go ahead and come to calculated window size because I'd always like to have a good measurement on that window size on the receiver and see how bytes in flight relates to my window size. These are actually the values that will be graphed out in the window scaling graph. So it's nice to understand them before we jump into the graph. So here we can see bytes in flight, data is being sent out and we are capturing on the side of 192.168.01. So we see data fly out, we wait for some acknowledgements to come back in, then we send another batch of data, the more data flies out, then we wait for some acknowledgements to come in. Now notice on the receiver, I have a receive window of 212.992. Okay, so I can never have more data outstanding on the wire, bytes in flight, than 212992. Again, remember, I'm capturing on the end of 192.168.01. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember. If I was capturing at this point, 1001, it would be a different story. Then my bytes in flight would be pretty low because I'm probably gonna be acknowledging that data as fast as it comes in the doorway. But this is a good way to learn how these numbers interact. So as I go down, just gonna scroll down a little bit more, I'm gonna see the bytes in flight continue to go up. I'm putting data out in the wire. Data is being acknowledged in the opposite direction, but notice my window size doesn't really go up on the receiver. Okay, so I'd just like to point that out to you before we jump into the graph. So let's go ahead and head into that graph. I'm gonna to come to statistics, I'm gonna to go to TCP stream graphs, let's go to window scaling. And now I have my window scaling stream graph. So now let's dig in a little deeper into this. Now on the bottom, you can notice that I got receive window is checked and bytes out is checked. So bytes in flight, bytes out. That's the blue line with all those dots. That is data that is outstanding on the wire or how much data is outstanding on the wire, unacknowledged. And that can never be above the green line. So the receiver's window is graphed out for me with that green line. Okay, so actually I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just so we can take a closer look at that. I come in here, just grab just the beginning here. And if you notice the green line, remember that receive window is a 212.992? Well, here we go, 212.992, that's about that level. And we can see it never really changes. Okay, so that's just always what I see that receive window being on that receiver. But if you look at the bytes out, here I can see bytes go out, they get acknowledged, so I send another burst. Those get acknowledged, they send another burst. So you can see these flat lines, usually that represents my network round trip time, the round trip time latency that I see on the network. That's how long it takes me to send data out and then get acts back. So I have more data outstanding, and then I have more data outstanding. And notice here the client at the beginning, it acknowledges everything that I put out in the wire. So that's why we're starting over back at zero in terms of bytes in flight. But as soon as that begins to go up, that means that there's outstanding data out there that has not yet been acknowledged that I previously sent. Now the idea here is that bytes in flight can never go above the green line. That is my ceiling. So I can see for this transfer, the window size was my limit. The sender could not put out more data 
then that green line allows me to. Now, depending on the application I'm using, depending on the TCP stack, that number can go up and it also can come down as the receive window fills. So it's an interesting thing to see graphed out over time. Now, while we're here in the TCP stream graphs, another way to look at this is to come down to type. And we've done this on a previous video, but let's do it again here. And let's go to TCP trace. So here's the same stream, but we're just looking at it from a different angle instead of bytes out and just receive window. In fact, if I come into zooms, I'm just gonna go in a little closer at the beginning. Here I can see my data going in flight, my data going in flight, my ax. So here again, I see that receive window, that's my ceiling. That's how much data I can put out there on the wire unacknowledged, and then I have to stop as a sender. So here I can see as soon as these packets, really these are sequence numbers in flight, as soon as they go out and they touch that green line, the sender has to stop. The receiver does not have enough room to receive any more data until these acts come in, and then I can go ahead and begin sending more data. So the window scaling graph, it gives us a good idea of bytes out. So also just a guesstimate of the TCP congestion window. We can also see that in play. And it lets us see that receive window over time and if it ever goes down to zero or if it ever becomes, like in this case, a ceiling. So hopefully that helps you get a bit more out of the window scaling graph. It's a great graph for troubleshooting. Really helps us to see if the window size on the receiver is the problem. And it's a great way that we can graph bytes in flight out. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I'll see you again soon.